This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Um, it's not a mistake that you clicked on this video. The Lord has given me a word today to share. It is not an easy word, but it is an effective word. Okay. All right. I have not, I have not been convicted to ask God to make this plague go away, to make this COVID-19 go away, to make this coronavirus go away. Instead, I have been convicted to ask God to use this pandemic to draw people closer to him, to bring people to repentance, to cause people to rest, to disturb our desires and our wills that we may receive his desires and his wills. There's a scripture that says that there is a type of suffering that work of repentance. There's a type of suffering that work of repentance. In other words, I'm asking God, Lord, use this suffering to work true repentance, okay? First John 5 and 14 says, and this is the confidence that we have in him and our God, that if we ask anything according to his will, not our own will, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. This is the confidence that we have in God, that if we ask anything according to his will, that he hears us, then how do we know the will of God? How do we know the will of God? The word of God is the expressed will of God. The word of God is the expressed will of God. So when we ask anything in alignment with what God's word says, we come into agreement with his word and he hears us, okay? So then Hebrews 11 and 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God, okay? Another version of uh, 1 John 5 and 14, it says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything that pleases him, he hears us. So Hebrews 11 and 6 is telling us, well, look, it's impossible to even please him or to act in accordance with his will if you don't first have faith. So then we have to ask ourselves, well, how does one have faith? Where does faith come from? Romans 10 and 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if our faith is not founded in the word of God, it's not faith because Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So in other words, we find what pleases him. We find his will, how to pray according to his will by his word. That's how we find it, okay? Faith must be measured by the word of God. What does God say in his word about our present crisis? Second Chronicles 7, 14 says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. If my people, if who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then ha, will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. James 5 and 16 says, confess your sins, or trespasses, one to another that you may be healed. Confess your sins to one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. How dare we ask God for healing without confessing our trespasses one to another or without exhorting one another to humble ourselves, pray and seek God's face and turn from our wicked ways. We'd be better off just asking him for mercy. How dare we, how dare we ask God for healing without wanting to uphold our portion of his will. His will is to heal, but as we can see, according to second Chronicles 7, 14, his will is to hear if us, his people who are called by his name, will humble ourselves, pray and seek his face, turn from our wicked ways. So then he can hear from heaven and then he can heal our land. And according to James 5 and 16, again, his will is that we shall be healed. But if we confess our sins one to another, okay? All right. So in Job 9, 32 through 35, Job says, 
God is not mortal like me. So I cannot argue with him or take him to trial. If only there were a mediator between us, someone who could bring us together. The mediator could make God stop beating me and I would no longer live in terror of his punishment. Then I could speak to him without fear, but I cannot do that in my own strength. So Jesus Christ declares in John 14, I am the way, I am the truth and the life. He says he's the way, he's the truth and he's the life. No one comes to the father except through me. We cannot receive Jesus Christ as savior, then turn around and reject him as the living word of God by which we are to govern our lives accordingly, okay? We cannot receive Jesus Christ as the savior of the world, the savior of our lives, the way to everlasting life. And then turn around and reject him as the living word of God by which we are to govern our lives accordingly, okay? He, he's saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Well, guess what? He's the living word of God. He's the living word of God. We can't ask for his benefits and then not do our part as joint heirs, okay? We cannot ask for his benefits and not do our part as joint heirs. In other words, how dare we ask for healing? How dare we ask to be delivered of this um, coronavirus without confessing our sins one to another, without humbling ourselves, praying and seeking God's face and turning from our wicked ways. It's really an insult to, to God's wisdom, to God's knowledge and to God's understanding to ask for the healing, but to neglect our part in fulfilling the healing. It's really an insult to him. It, it, it's, it's to assume that number one, perhaps coronavirus, perhaps COVID-19 caught God by surprise. Perhaps, you know, the enemy got one over on him and, and he didn't know that it was going to do. That's, that's like some people, some people believe that, that when God gave his son to the world, that he didn't know the, the world was going to persecute him the way that they did and beat him the way that they did. So that's to say that he's not all knowing. So to just ask for healing, but not seek first God, why did you allow this to come upon us? What is the purpose that you would, because Romans 8 and 28 says he works all things for the good of those who love him, the called according to his purpose. So Lord, what good are you fulfilling in this? What purpose did you have in this Lord? The enemy didn't get one over on him. God saw this coming before it came and he allowed it to happen for, for our good, for our good. So we, we should, we, it's like my daughter, uh, you know, it's been a couple of times I asked her to do something and she, and, and, and she just assumed that I just didn't know what I was talking about without doing what I told her to do first. She just assumed that I was wrong. That's what we do. when we just shortcut and, and ask God to deliver this, deliver us from this healing. We just assumed that he didn't know what he was doing, that he was being, he was being um, unintentional, that, 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 that he was being careless and reckless, that he was acting outside of purpose, act, acting outside of who he is. I mean, we sing that song, he's intentional. So what was his intent in allowing this to come to pass? And how dare we ask him for healing without first seeking? What was his intention? How dare we ask for healing without asking for an inner transformation of our heart? How dare we seek his benefits without... Um, falling in line with his order without getting in line with his will. How dare we? The nerve of us. Huh. Jesus. All right. So that's the word that I have. I have not been convicted to ask for healing. It's like he told the Pharisees, you washed the outside of the cup, but the inside is dirty. Why would he deliver us from this thing without first allowing it to accomplish something? All right. So my prayer, like I said, is that this will cause us to humble ourselves, to pray and to seek his face, to turn from our wicked ways so that then he can hear from heaven and heal our land. Okay. That this will cause us to deny what we think, what we feel and what we want. That this will cause us to get into greater intimacy with him. 
And one thing the Holy Spirit was putting on my heart as mature Christians, it's, it's, it's time to stop saying, oh, forgive us for sins committed knowingly and unknowingly. That's for when you ignorant and you really don't know what you did. But when you know what you're doing that's offensive to God, when you know that he's asked you to do something and you're just not doing it, when you know that you're doing something contrary to his word, that's when you need to confess it. You need to confess it, not just ask for forgiveness for it, but actually confess what it is that you're doing that's offensive to him. That's contrary to who he's created you to be all right all right so um father god in the name of jesus i thank you for mercy lord i thank you for protection father god that even in the midst of this pandemic father god your will shall be done in the earth as it is in heaven oh god i thank you that this is causing us to um humble ourselves to pray and seek your face and to turn from our wicked ways that this is causing us to seek rest to receive your rest that this is causing us to hear your voice oh god help us to just get in a line with what you're doing in this season help us to come into agreement with your word oh god help us to to have greater trust in you lord the, the one man who wanted to heal him for his sound, he said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief, Lord. Some of us believe and we got unbelief, Lord. So help us, Father God. Help us to fully believe, Lord. Overcome our unbelief, oh God. Overcome our rebellion, Lord. Help us, Lord. Like Job said, we can't do it in our own strength. Help us to receive the mediator, oh God. Help us to receive his strength, Lord. Help us to receive your word in its totality. Mm, Jesus. Maros pesia rati reba. Com se reba shimatoros fayas kemiaro. Help us, Lord, to worship you in truth and in spirit. Oh, help us to worship you, Lord, in truth and in spirit. Ha. Asi. Make ya. Make us pure and holy. Make us pure and holy. Present us faultless. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. God is calling us into intimacy with him. He's calling us into intimacy with him. It's like the word he gave some months ago where he said, you know, some of us, we know the pastors, we know the prophets, we know the ministers, we know the workers, but we don't know him. John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son so that whosoever believeth in the only begotten son should not perish, but shall have eternal life. That's like saying, yes, whosoever believeth in the savior to walk the earth in flesh, but whosoever believe in my word too, because he was the word in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And then it tells us the word became flesh so you can't receive him in the person but then not receive him and not receive the word of god okay and 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 in john 17 and 3 it says and this is life eternal that we may know the only true and wise god in jesus christ whom he has sent god didn't send his only begotten son he didn't send his word so that we could have intimacy with our pastors and not know him this is a a, a call to intimacy and to cleansing call to intimacy and to cleanse and to give up our idols to, to lean not to our own understanding but in all of our ways to to acknowledge god that he may direct our paths okay and i mean another word that i received from him he was reminding me about moses um you know some people debate well was god about to kill moses because moses didn't circumcise one of his sons but but it, it says that moses that, that god was about to kill him and then it says zipporah she um she basically circumcised the son and, and then um you know so moses didn't die but later on we moses even as he was walking in his purpose and leading the israelites into the promised land um earlier on god had told him to smite the rock two times and it may bring forth water and he listened but later on moses got frustrated moses was was uh frustrated because of the the grumbling and complaining of the of the people and um, God gave him instruction this time to speak to the rock that it would bring forth water. And, 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 and him and Aaron, they said, listen, you rebels, must we, um, they called them rebels and they said, must we something? And he hit the rock instead of speaking to it. And God says, because you did not trust me enough to demonstrate my holiness, you will not lead these people into the promised land. So Father God, please forgive us for where we have not trusted you where we we haven't trusted that you were loving where we haven't trusted 
um, your instruction, Father God. Help us. Like Job said, we can't do this in our own strength. Thou art the potter and we are the clay. Your word says it's you who works in us to desire and to do what's good and pleasing to you. We need you, Lord. We need you to destroy um, the path that we are on and the way that leads to sin and death. We need you to, to get in our way to, to, um, send us signs and wonders, Lord, to chase us down with your love, oh God, to be merciful unto us, oh God. Help us, Lord, help us, help us, help us to be obedient to you, to your word. You said, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. Help us to obey your commandments, Lord, mm, that we may really love you and not just say that we do, Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Be blessed.